Hello travelers, welcome to the Copper Fox Inn where we discuss homebrew for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Come on in, take a seat and join us as we look through all these tomes and scrolls that we've assembled here to find the strangest, the most interesting, the silliest homebrews from all across the internet. Um, uh, my name is Thomas the Human Bard and I am joined by... Mercy the Tiefling Wizard. Be no one else, rock. I guess. Be the rock. <laughs> well, Odog usually goes before me. <laughs> no, I, wanted, I just wanted to see, check. see what would happen. No, uh, Onog the half orc barbarian. I was gonna do a bit for my intro like I normally do, but then I just panicked and introduced myself instead. <laughs> <laughs> I had a whole bit planned in my head. It involved nachos. <laughs> oh man. Well, if we take time to listen to that bit, that would be great. So instead, uh, Mercy, what have you brought this week? <laughs> So I have been watching a lot of anime lately, okay. and my <laughs> favorite anime trope ever is the the big strong is the big strong punch boy. The big strong beautiful boy. The, the big strong beautiful beautiful sweet boy. I'm gonna Think, take a couple of guesses and see which anime you guys were. Oh yeah, watching. the the purest example of that is Major Armstrong <laughs> from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. He's my favorite character in, in a, anything ever. And so I was very, uh, this one really appealed to me. This is Way of the Brawler, the monk subclass. Ooh. This is from r slash D&D Homebrew from user Trent's Stranger. Nice. Okay. Way of the Brawler, you say? Way of the Brawler. I see a very fun kind of old timey bar fight looking guy here Absolutely. with a big mustache. I gotta what say, does this, this have to do with being a monk? This art is my favorite style of dress for a man. Like mustache, rolled up <laughs> sleeves, suspenders, ready to punch someone. That's my he, he, absolute favorite fashion. He's a good strong lad. So here we go. Way of the Brawler. While most monks may hone their strength through isolation and careful introspection. Oh, I should be doing a voice. No, that's fine. You... Monks of the Way of you, the Brawler. You really don't have train to. Do a voice. Through street fighting and underground brawls, a loose collection of pugilists and bruisers, they develop their techniques through sheer muscle and moxie. Yeah. Through their methods... Oh, Though their methods may be unorthodox, any who might question them soon learn of their indomitable prowess for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Often brash and bull-headed, monks of this nature are unlikely to hold much respect for more austere traditions. They may otherwise be indistinguishable from the average townsfolk outside of combat. To these monks, a bar fight is far more valuable than some dusty old temple. Bravo. Yeah, well, it was a very good voice. I will. Uh, you rolled Thank high you. on the performance check. Thank you. That was very good. It was be much better than I was expecting. <laughs> wow, I All thought right. it was great. I had every faith in you, Mercy. Oh, thank you, Bean. Thanks. Gumption, when you choose this tradition at third level, your fighting experience allows you to push your body to incredible feats. Push it even further beyond! <laughs> When you make an athletics check, you can use your wisdom modifier instead of your strength modifier to make that check. What? Right? I like okay, that. Okay, yeah. athletics wisdom. Like, well, that's monks already... are usually wisdom decks. That's, okay, so, okay, okay, so. You are already, there is a variant rule where DMs can allow any check to be made of with course, any statistic. Or you can make a wisdom athletic. But this allows you... To, to say, decide. To say if, if you were asking me to make an athletics check, I am allowed to, even without your permission. Yeah, exactly. Make it with wisdom. Exactly. <laughs> sure, okay. Yeah. Interesting. So you'll be extra strong. I like this one. The old one, too. <laughs> Starting at third level, your confidence swells alongside your successive blows. Whenever you hit an unmarked creature with an unarmed strike, unmarked. an unmarked creature with an yeah. unarmed strike, I think I may have misspoken. No, you said you, it right. Oh, well, there, I said it twice. You can mark that creature until the start of your next turn or until you deal damage to that creature with another unarmed strike. You have advantage on unarmed strikes that you might make against marked creatures. Okay. okay. You're just like, you are dead. It almost seems like kind of their version of Hunter's Mark, A little. where it's like, this is my prey. It's like once you get the first blow, you're as like, long ah. as you stay on that target, you'll give yourself advantage for all your punches. Yeah. Which feels so Major Armstrong to me, the idea of like, I'm invincible! Like the more you punch, the more confident you get, which yeah. is very fun. Mm. I, I like the flavor of it a lot. 
that's actually pretty good. It's I, good. It, yeah. And it and makes it you is... commit to a certain play style too. Mm-hmm. Of like, I'm gonna go on one guy and get him till he's down, and then move to another. I can't normally. Right. Monks will do a lot of zipping around the battlefield, and mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna stun that guy, and then I'm gonna go over here and fight this guy. But this is like, I'm gonna be a one target yeah. takedown monk. So Which it is, is very inter- efficient. It is interesting fight. to note, though, that you can change targets. It's not, it isn't like Hunter's Mark, where it, like, if, if obviously, if you want to get the use of marking a creature with your attack, it just says if you make a melee, or if you make an unarmed attack against them, you can mark them. So, it's uh-huh. a- but it, you only mark them till your next turn, right. or until you deal damage. To right, them. right, so right. So it's like it only lasts until your next punch. But really. it, it gives. But if you keep hitting, you keep landing your yeah, blows. Yeah, you keep you get hitting, you will on. always have advantage. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. It, it rewards. Um, yeah. It rewards attacking one person, but it doesn't force you to stay no, with yeah. that person well, and until it's, they're it's unconscious. N- yeah, Definitely. and it rewards precision. Like yeah, and yeah. you can just immediate, especially if it's like past fifth level and you get two attacks per action. Yeah, um, you can. Change change your mind and attack someone once, and then attack them with. A, uh, well, actually, monks would have three attacks or even four attacks at that level. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. can just ch- pivot immediately into somebody else, and then just get. You still have advantage on all three of your remaining attacks after the first attack that round. And and I like that it gives you advantage instead of just um, an increase in damage because I like that it rewards accuracy with more accuracy. Yeah, like actually, if you hit, you're more likely to hit. Really quickly, I think it's actually really interesting. Um, and the the name of it actually cues into this. The old one two. It actually, if on the same character, it trigger it would trigger every other punch. Is how it would work. Well, um, it, because yeah. you would oh, mark uh, them uh, with the first punch, but then because they're marked, you can't mark them again with the second they have one. To be unmarked, then on the third right. punch, they are unmarked again, and yeah. then on the fourth punch, they're marked again. Well, so every other punch catch. would be marked. If you mm-hmm. think about it, in boxing, there's like combos people use. You, you exactly, yeah. Exactly. You go like jab, mm-hmm. jab, like counter strike or whatever. One might even say the old one too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so you two. give them the the slight jab with the left hand, and then like the big hook with the right mm-hmm. hand, and that's your like stronger, more accurate. Um, I do, I do it. like that reading a little bit better because the way I was interpreting mm-hmm. it is because it's one of those things where it's like when do they become unmarked? Because yeah. you can both mark and uh, you both mark and unmark someone when you make a successful hit or you deal damage. And yeah. I do like that because this this is kind of just otherwise strictly better than the barbarian reckless attack feature that grants you advantage on attacks, on melee attacks. Yeah, sure. And if this was, you can just keep chaining it and it always gives you marked, then that just sort of becomes strictly better than that No, ability. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be the sort of rhythmic. Yeah, I think you're first right. First punch marks them, second punch, like, hits them hard. Like, yeah. Next and then punch you marks do it them, again. Third, yeah. fourth you punch, yeah. You do your combos mm-hmm. over and over again. Mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so our next ability is cross counter. At sixth level, you can react to enemy attacks with stunning agility. When a creature within your reach attacks you, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on that attack. If that attack misses, you can spend one key point to make an unarmed strike against that creature. Yeah. So it's your dodge punch yeah, combo. Sure. It's giving you another combo. Which it's is very neat. similar to uh, a couple of different battle master maneuvers, kind of all put into one. Um, kind of like a repost mixed with like a faint. Yeah, kind of a little thing. bit. Yeah. yeah. It, it it is weird that at the bottom it says in order to do that you must out loud say X X Y X Y. Oh I don't is that written in in Invisible parchment ink? colored yeah. ink? I, I yeah. can't see that. Well, you have I, to hit start, select up, down, left, right. Yeah. <laughs> this is also interesting to note that this is almost an exact replica of the missile catching ability that monks get, except it's for melee attacks instead of ranged attacks. Yeah. And uh, I believe they get that at level three. And so yeah. it's it's kind of like at six level, you can now basically missile catch punches yeah. instead. Yeah. You catch <laughs> their fist and then push it back into their face. Mm-hmm. Catch these hands and then they catch <laughs> these hands. And then they hands. catch yeah. your hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. All right. Next we have Hefty Wallop. By 11th level, you gain the ability to throw especially concussive punches. Whenever you use your stunning strike feature with an unarmed strike, you deal extra force damage to the target in addition to the unarmed strike's damage. The extra damage is equal to the number you roll on a martial arts die. The no- on a martial so arts you die. roll so, for the So the martial the arts damage. die is the scaling ability that monks get where it's like right. at 
you know, at level three, they, mm -hmm. you know, or at, at certain levels, monk weapons are D6s, or their melee attack, their unarmed strikes are D6s, so, right. and then as they level but up, is, they is get that bigger. But is that how you how you yeah, word the, that the damage is no. equal to the number you roll that seems odd to me it's a little maybe i'm not sure exactly about the form it makes it sound like you've already rolled that die and you're checking it but i think it's telling you to, to roll, roll. i think it is yeah i think yeah. i think it's just i not think it's the telling you roll a martial to. arts die or is it you deal damage equal or is to it the trying to just yeah. say is it just trying to say you deal additional force damage equal to the number you rolled on your martial arts die for the attack already Hmm, that's like, a good question. So I think is it this just could like do... raw doubling the damage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think this could be, could use a little clarification. I, I wonder, it could, you could argue it either of those If ways. that were the intention, I would expect it to say on the martial arts die as opposed to a martial arts die. Are we sure yeah. it's not just right, supposed to be like a special die with generic Asian writing on it that you buy at the generic Asian store All right. <laughs> in, the, in the mall that just kind of is like has general martial artsy things in it? It's the die that no, you buy that have limbs so. that like kick you and punch you when you try to roll them. <laughs> uh -huh. Those enchanted dice? Those uh -huh. martial arts? No, I think it's the number you roll for martial arts, comma, die. <laughs> and then you die. <laughs> I rolled Taekwondo. Die. And then I died. <laughs> What's the next one? That's the final ability. All right, our here. final ability. Thunderous Vigor! Yeah. At 17th level, you can imbue your fists with supersonic power! Supersonic <laughs> power! You can cast the knock spell as an action. I like that. <laughs> okay. I like that a lot. Okay, I get it. Additionally, immediately after you take the attack action on your turn, you can spend two key points to cast the Thunder Wave spell as a bonus action. Okay, sure. As a bonus action, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You can... You can spend additional key points to cast Thunder Wave as a higher level spell. Each additional key point you spend increases the spell's level Ooh. by one. Wow. The maximum number of key points, two plus any additional points that you can spend on the spell equals half your monk level. You can't just be like, I cast it at a, a million levels. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, sure. now that being said... You only there, have so many key points. No, can you no, cast no, that, it at 10th level? No, that's the thing. Is like, that's... That's actually an irrelevant line of text because you only gain this ability at 17th level when you can already cast, like, 8th level spells. <laughs> but I'm but, saying, can you now cast it at 10th level when you're 20? Yeah, level? like, the, what, what, what does a 10th level spell mean? Well, it means, so if... Yeah, what what, uh, what Wave, level is Thunder Wave originally? Thunder, uh, Wave, it's Thunder not Wave is, I think a, it's two. is, a, is a first level spell. Oh, okay, I thought it was second. Yeah, I think... Okay, yeah. So if Thunder Wave is a first level spell, then if you're a 17th level monk, you are only allowed to spend... You can still cast it up to 8th level up spell. To, what would it be, 8? Yeah, you can cast it up to 8, which... And then in a, in a, yeah. level, in a level, you can cast it at a 9th level I spell. I mean, I you're, guess you're right. So that's which a... only does 1d, like, yeah. 6 or 1d8 more d8 damage. More damage. You're, you're, you're right, that is, that is probably irrelevant. Being yeah. careful, yeah. I guess, in their language. They're just yeah, well, trying to make well, sure. Well, that, that was one of the things, like, when I saw this, I was going to bring it up. Uh, this is... You, so this is a 17th level ability that allows you to cast a 2nd level spell and a 1st level spell using your key points. That sure. is not exciting in any yeah. way. Yeah, I wish it was like a, a boosted version of the Thunder Wave spell or something, because it's your 17th level. You're already a monk, so that means you like don't you, have to eat you or can drink literally, and don't, can't die anymore. Oh, you gosh, can what literally are, astral project yourself with your key points. What are those? At this point. Um, yeah. Oh gosh, what is it called? I, I'm totally blanking on the word for weapon. Is it ballistics or something? Weapons that do double damage to um, inanimate objects. Oh, siege weapons. I siege weapons. weapons. I, I would love it if it was or your fists adamantium. or siege weapons. Your fists, your fists are, are siege weapons. weapons. You oh can just gosh. punch through walls. Well, I think yeah. we I think we ran into that with uh, with the barbarian totem or path of the strongest. Whereas yeah. At yeah. a certain point, Strong. they were like, yeah. you are you are a siege weapon. <laughs> yeah, Which yeah, is yeah. delightful. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. I think that it's... I get what they're going for with the Thunderous Vigor. I want it to be bigger, mm. though. Yeah. I love this idea, and I want this to be when General Armstrong and Full Metal Alchemist mm -hmm. like punches a dude's head clean off exactly. and through the wall and Absolutely. like breaks and the like, whole room. To give a I mean? to give a frame of reference, the uh, Way of the Open Hand 17th level technique is a five star instant death punch. 
So. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, mm -hmm. what if it's just that, like, if you land an unarmed punch on someone, there's like a 50-50 shot that they just pass out. Almost something where it's just like, if you punch someone, they yeah. they just are out. Well, it's like, yeah, like I, I still I still would want them to to have their own unique, but yeah, like at 17th level, yeah. the 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 open hand monks get get quivering palm, which only uses three key points, and it's like is literally one of the only save or die abilities in D&D 5th edition, where they mm -hmm. either save it and take enormous amounts of necrotic damage, or they fail the save and they die. Yep. <laughs> Yikes. So so compare that to you can cast a first level spell with your key points. Ooh, okay. Uh, that is, it's, it's different. <laughs> I've got it, I've got it. The thunder is bigger. One? When you punch someone, if they fail to save, they have very small birds that just fly around, <laughs> around their head for, like, the rest of their lives. Just the little tweety forever, birds the little floating around. Forever. I like the idea of Thunder Wave being attached to to these punches. Yeah. Maybe that isn't the 17th level ability. Maybe you do some reorganizing and buffing. Because, um, yeah, but that I, is a I cool like, thing to do, but, yeah, yeah not for the, the capstone ability. I mean, like, maybe right. your punches just have thunder damage in addition to the damage they already do. Well, and that is kind of what's happening on, at the 11th level yeah. of Hefty Wallop with Stunning Strike. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, like yeah. what Mercy said, you, you add this ability mm -hmm. of thunder stuff a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. and then you come up with something different for 17. Yeah. Thunder, Wave, thunder Wave is also a weird like kind of problem for a hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat based melee class where Thunder Wave pushes everyone away from you but you, but you want, want them to be close. next to people. That's yeah. actually a very, a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea of knock. I like yeah. the idea of You are of literally Thunder able Wave. to just punch open doors. Right, right. I think that the flavor I love that. That's like so good. flavorfully <laughs> That's those so those good. both work really yeah. really well. Um but definitely I think as a capstone ability it needs to be buffed. Hear 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 me out on this. What if you got some sort of uh, like whenever you land a, a melee hit you can knock the enemy prone. Just like, yeah. just like immediately oh, with like, no like, contest. That's good. That's actually just like, really you're good. You're just dropping people to the floor and then they're prone so you have advantage on all your attacks against them anyway. Mm -hmm. So now you're just going to town what, and these like, dudes on the ground. In that, like the trailer for the last Bourne movie, he's in like a fight and it's supposed to be huge. And then he just goes up and elbows him and the guy like immediately drops. Just drops in one hit that's to the a, ground. That's a good idea. Something like to make that maybe. Prone. Just something that yeah. will, it's like, it brings up this feeling like it still rewards your other or, abilities of getting in this rhythm and punching people well, and like fighting back, but then you can just drop a dude, you know? Yeah, I, I, I like the idea of being able to just instantly do something to somebody. Maybe it's like whenever you try, whenever you use your stunning strike on someone, they always have disadvantage or something like that on the same. Oh, sure, sure. Because knocking them prone, while that's normally pretty cool, that actually non bows with his pre like the old one too which like gra already grants you advantage so why would you care about knocking it's unnecessary them that's yeah. fair yeah and yeah, so I but i like i like the idea of yeah just this kind of thing where you are such a trained fighter you just immediately Bah, you know, you just knock them down, kind of. If thing. it is a medium or smaller creature, they are knocked down to the ground immediately. Right. Yeah, I mean, just no if, matter what, kind of a thing. What if it was like almost the marked ability? You know, in like um, the Kingsman when he's f having that big bar fight scene. What if it was something like, as long as you're fighting, anyone who comes within a certain distance of you becomes marked automatically. Oh, so then it like synergizes with the old one too, and you just have advantage yeah. on people like all if, the time. If you're fighting and some, like, if you're already throwing a punch and some Everyone comes, within five feet of yeah. you is marked. You, like, you know, you're that punching is, that him. That is kind of a cool, And then when yeah. he comes in, you're just like, you're the next part of my combo. Like, mm -hmm. you lined up, so now you're getting punched. I do, I do kind of, like, it's kind of weird, but wait, I, okay. as, Ooh, as a capstone, wait. I do like that as, like, a, everyone just always, you always have wait. advantage on fighting them. <laughs> yeah. I, heard, I, I figured it out. Okay, hear me out. I didn't figure it out, but also this is amazing and this is the best idea I've ever had. Okay. This ability, you say, if you land an unarmed strike, if you hit an opponent with an unarmed strike, you can make another unarmed strike against that opponent. <laughs> Just every time. 
You as long as you keep going. hitting, you can go forever. As long as you don't miss, yeah. As long as Ooh. every single punch hits, you just don't stop, and you you've taken twelve attacks on that turn. But it but it has maybe to be against like something. the same target or something. Oh, it has to be against the same target. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But maybe it costs called... a key point or whatever. Like we work that out. But the the flavor then is that you keep using your one two punch on these guys, and you're like haymakers, and you're like force damage on them. But you just take one dude completely out of the fight in one turn. <laughs> and then you look over your shoulder and I you're like, who's next? put a that, limit on that. Yeah, I would want to at least give that, like, you can spend a key point to then exactly. keep going. Exactly, I was gonna say give it a cost. Uh, give no, it a key point cost I'm because... saying you do, like, you can spend four key points to attack unlimitedly. Oh, uh, okay. It's called okay. c, -c, c combo As right? long as Only... there is some kind of resource draw on it. But yeah, I sure. love that idea. That, yeah. that, that makes Mercy, me so happy. What are you saying? I think that there's a potential problem with that. Okay, sure. Um, just from a gameplay perspective where it isn't, like, you run the risk of having it be less fun for the rest of your party. Yeah, for if the it's other just people. like, okay, I'll just watch. Like, well, oh, you, sure. your turn goes on for 50 turns and I don't land a single hit. I totally so get I that. So I think by making every time that it's like, and I'm going to punch again, cost another key point, it puts more of a... Because, well, that's such a fun idea. I don't know if it's as fun in a party. Well, maybe. In, like, real play. Well, yeah. yeah. It, it that needs makes to sense. Be, it either needs to be a one-time cost of, like, a rather like large... all of your like, key points? At, like, you I wouldn't say all of them for one turn. Maybe, like, right. even yeah. five or six key but points, a, a and you can chunk. just uh -huh. keep going as long as you keep but hitting. That's, that's also, though, if you make it that uh, sort of, like, a big expense, it can also, instead of being boring of, like, I guess I'll sit back while you have fun, it could be, like, everyone rallies around you. It's like, guys, I'm doing Do it. it. I yeah. spend all of my points, and we're just going to see how long we can go. And every single hit, everyone around you is like, get him again! Get him again! Yeah. And then you're all joining in that moment of, like, look, this is my thing. I've spent all of my resources uh -huh. to do this. Everybody sit around and see how far I can go. And then you tell your, your friend a story of that one time you hit a Dude, thirty times in one turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I as long as it has yeah. a as has a significant cost, I think that works. If it's like seventeen, so you, can't you, just, you can just always keep hitting. Yeah, yeah you that's can't not just yeah. always do it. But right. I, yeah, I do. I do like it. Either each additional punch costs or something, or maybe it's like oh, maybe it like starts being an exponential key point cost. Like the next mm. the, the next free attack after you've done all of your normal attacks, you can do costs a key point. And then the next, so if you hit with that one, you can still do your one-two punch, but the next one costs two key points. And then the next one costs three okay, key sure, points. Or something like sure. Like you can keep going, but each one starts costing you more and more and more, but you can keep going. That could be exciting too, for, with the, the idea of the rest of your party being mm -hmm. like, he's almost finished, <laughs> like Ooh, do it again. Another, here's a new design space. The 17th level is a critical hit gives you two key points. Ah, I like it. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Where it's like, and then if you, boy hit, if you keep charge. going, you, you get your juice back. I like it. I like it. I do love the image of there's like a ginormous dragon that lands. And you're as big, you, you This go is the up most anime its, we have ever been. <laughs> yeah, go we've never gotten ankle, this anime before. And you just go up and you want to punch this dragon a hundred times. <laughs> boop, boop. And that's how it, the dragon doesn't even get to breathe fire. It just dies because I love that the, image, the idea of uh, a ton. I, I feel like what a lot of people would immediately be saying is like, well, you've got to put a size limit on something where it's like, oh, if a creature is like large or smaller or something. A However, I raise you anime because yes. one of like <laughs> my favorite things is like then it cuts to this Somebody normal upper sized upper man a exactly <laughs> yeah. and the tarasque goes flying backwards okay. i love it that's that's beautiful imagery that's beautiful design space uh i want to see somebody work that into a, a monk class because that's fantastic it. but i think that's all the time we've got for this uh thank you for bringing this mercy so we, good yeah, this is incredible. This, uh, yeah, it, it got He's it just... definitely gets the creative juices flowing. I'll say that. Yeah, much. what was the name of the creator again, real quick for me? Trent Stranger. Trent Trent Stranger. Trent Stranger. Trent Stranger. Thank you for designing this, Trent Stranger. This is fantastic. Thank I love you the creativity here. For this here. strong, chunky this boy. Strong, chunky boy that you've gifted to us. I would um, argue that he is not strong nor chunky because. He, in he, fact, replaces his right. strength with abilities. You're right. He's strong. He's wisdom instead. He, he, is, he, is a, he is a wise chunky boy. <laughs> yes, definitely. He's both slippery and 
chubby. Yeah, but we love this. Time. This is right up our alley of design space of, like, it, it was still works in the game, but also you, you can, can break get ridiculous with it. Oh, yeah, and that's where we love it. So, uh, listeners, if you liked this or if you have ideas of what you would do for this kind of ultimate final ability, comment below. Um, remember to like the video and subscribe for more future D&D homebrew discussion content and send any uh, homebrews that you've created to our email, thecopperfoxin at gmail.com. And um, that'll wrap it up for today. So until next time, keep on adventuring.